दोस्तों इससे पहले कि मैं जयप्रकाश राधाकृष्णन जी के सामने बैठूं ये फेस्टिवल एक बहुत ही मजेदार सा एक्सपीरियंस पिछले चार दिनों में रहा है इंदौर से लेकर के आज तक इस छोटी सी जगह पे इतनी तरह तरह की फिल्में जो देखने को मिली हैं और खास करके फर्स्ट टाइम आर डायरेक्टर्स की वो भले कंपटीशन सेक्शन में हो या या शेफाली जी बैठी हुई है सामने कंपटीशन सेक्शन की ना भी फिल्में हो वो भी अपने आप में एक रेवल्यूशन रही है कि कितना कमाल का टैलेंट है हिंदुस्तान में सब तरफ से जयप्रकाश राधा कृष्ण जी इज essentially been an actor from up south but then he chose to make this film and how powerful how powerful this film lens is we had a little demonstration last night when the film began it was almost a full house and after that not because people were bored but pe pe because people were so shocked people were so disturbed from within that i could see a couple of ladies and girls leaving the theater they were not leaving the theater because somebody was being raped there of course the film talks about rape but it never shows that but without showing any going details the film made you so fearful from within the oh my god this could happen in the world today in the world of technology where voyeurism of all kinds is is ruling the roost but this voyeurism is not only of looking at some people else i was talking to shefali the other night we are also sometimes turning this gaze to not within ourselves but to half the time our cameras are targeted towards our, ourselves in this world full of selfies to ye na apne aap ko bhi hum itne apne bare mein bhi thoda sa hua isti ko pe ja rahe hain कि हम अपने आप को देखना चाहते हैं तो अभी कैसा लग रहा हूं अभी कैसा लग रही हूं मैं खाना खाते समय कैसा लग रहा हूं मैं और पहाड़ा करते समय कैसा लग रहा हूं मैं ये जो जो ये वॉयसों के साथ तक पहुंचता जा रहा है अपने ऊपर और दूसरे के ऊपर भी जो पहुंचता जा रहा है इस टेक्नोलॉजी को लेते हुए उसको ले, लेके इतनी खूबसूरत और खतरनाक सो ब्यूटीफुल एंड फ्राइटफुल एट द सेम टाइम द फिल्म व्हिच आई बी आई आई नो दैट आई बेटर स्विच टू इंग्लिश तो इट्स फाइन टू टू बी टू बी कम्युनिकेटिंग टू यू So from being a well-known, successful actor, I mean, what drew you to? You always wanted to be a director, or was this the subject which drew you to it? We would like to know a little bit more about you before the professional, a little bit personal story of of uh, Jay Prakash. First of all, uh, I would like to correct. I was not a known and successful actor. Uh, I was trying, and I wanted to be an actor. I trained. in acting and i was working in the west <coughs> and uh, i came back to chennai in 2006 and did all that actors do to you know try and find a role which i couldn't find and uh, that frustration that limitation made me learn as much as possible again online way sab kuch hota hai whatever i could uh, i read books <coughs> and watched films and i thought you know uh, abhi i have to do something i have to do something and uh, i wrote my first script for my friend who was supposed to direct it and uh, when i switch i will learn directing from him but that didn't take off for one year and i am generally a very restless person so i thought abhi to i cannot wait for anyone that may do something for myself 
So this idea of a lens, it happened when I was having a Skype conversation with my teacher who taught me acting. He's in Seattle. Uh, his name is Jerry Cobber. And uh, when one night when we were talking, I just spontaneously told him that, you know, what if I tell you that I'm going to die, I'm going to commit suicide, and what can you do? You are sitting in Seattle, but though we are looking at each other and talking. So he said that is very scary. So that idea stuck to me that time. And when this film did not happen, the first script that I wrote, I thought I should have done this. So that's how it started. Wonderful. I mean, I mean, it started from something which I. Uh, how, how did it thought spring in your mind when talking to your acting teacher? That why, if I commit suicide in front of you? Okay. Actually, did, did you read because these kinds of things have happened? Now, <laughs> no. Uh, that time when I uh, had this idea, I, I didn't hear about that news anywhere. But I think because that time uh, in Colorado, in a theater. A madman, you know, went into theater and killed a lot of people. So he was talking to me about that. He was asking me, JP, does these kind of things happen in India? You know, see people are mad here. And I said, yeah, what is But there in one stretch they do it, here they do it, you know, uh, independently. Like, it's not together, that's all. But it happens in it. So probably. Hello. Yeah. So probably from that idea, and then he was telling me, "What are you doing?" I said, uh, "No acting jobs and stuff like that." So he said, "New media here. You have Skype. Now you are looking at me. We have a video. Shoot something. You know, learn editing. Um, learn how to use camera. Do something for yourself." So all these we were talking, and so probably you know from there it came. And, and these kind of scary things do happen. Um, uh, I can tell you from very personal experience, and Sudhir also knew that boy who was with me at the National School of Drama. And in National School of Drama, on a set, a boy hung himself and died. Whatever his name was. So he used to know him. I knew him, of course, because I studied with him. So these kind of scary things people do do. These dramatic things are done in life. It can be a reality. Uh, uh, one more thing which I, I think I'm, I'm discovering in this festival is this a wonderful thing. Like in your film, uh, Jay Prakash, it's very difficult to determine the language of the film. I don't know what certificate did you get because you have to write a certain language in the certificate because his film uses English, his film uses uh, Tamil, his film uses some Malayalam, his film uses two, three kinds of language. In Jumni also, I don't know whether it's a Punjabi film or an English film. Last time we were watching Highway. Again, so many languages are are used equally in, in, in a script that it's very difficult to determine that which, what film to call it. And I think that's what India is becoming. I was talking to you in Hindi, I was talking to you in English, and I was talking to you in Karnika, I was talking to you in Karnika, and I was talking to you in Karnika. And that's not the case, we all have a German speak German. And that's what was one beautiful in your film. So many languages, so many characters, so many uh, uh, regions of yeah, that you used. That's right. And, uh, See, initially uh, I, I can write only in English, other languages I cannot write that uh, you know, easily. I wrote it in English and uh, I actually wanted to do this film in Tamil. Because, you know, it's based there and I wrote, uh, wrote, I wrote the script, I translated it in Tamil and we did a workshop in Tamil. But uh, when I shot it, it was not coming through. It was, something was not organically right. Then we decided to go make it in English, like how, how we talk in general without any grammar. So if you see my film, uh, you know, Anand Sami, that character, he speaks Tamil and English in a, in a mixture without a proper grammar. So that was intentional and then I thought, okay, then let everyone speak their own language, right? So it's happening in Tamil Nadu, so they speak Tamil, Munar, Malayalam, and so and so. And, and also the kind of technology and the kind of generation which uses this technology always speaks a lot of English. So that naturally and, and it's woven so well in your film. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jeffrey I think it's a very difficult film to write. Yeah. What was your experience in writing this film? Because it, it looks very easy, camera or computer chalaya, but I think it's so well written. And to write this film is, is must have been a, a great challenge, a great experience for you. 
Yes, definitely it was and uh, let me very honestly tell you, I hate writing. Um, it's a very emotionally, for me it's very, it's very boring actually. Very, very boring. You sit, write and nothing happens. You have to wait and wait and uh, I, I personally think that you write a story, it gets its life and uh, your life reduces a little bit. That is, there is that much pressure and tension. Like, uh, like how Sudhir uh, sir said the other day, welcome to the world of, uh, you know, uh, hypertension and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, it was not a very enjoyable process. But um, one thing I was very sure about was I have to learn the craft. See, some people write it very organically. It's fine. You can have thousands of ideas. See, I had this idea of what if I die in front of you. That's all. That idea cannot be become a story, right? It has to have a theme. It has to have characters. It has to emotionally connect. Only then, uh, I believe that a story is successfully told. So, like I told before, whatever material was available, the great teachers, you know, who were understood those things, they have written great books. Uh, so, whatever I could get my hands on, I read. I read and I write, and then I thought, okay, now. Let me see what I have learned. And so it took me three years, two and a half to three years to uh, you know, think about this. And then I had this idea and I needed a theme for my film. Just like that I cannot develop this saying, you know, I'm going to die, you watch me die and you cannot take it forward from there. I need a theme. So I found this when I was doing research online. I found this video called Amanda Suicide Note video. This uh, girl Amanda, she was in Canada and she uh, had a friend on Facebook and uh, they had a private conversation on Lens and she flashed for him but he captured it and started bullying her after that and she he posted it on online on Facebook and the whole family moved to another place she joined another school but so later slowly it, you know even there people came to know about that and even there she couldn't go to school and she was very depressed and one day she decided to die and uh, so that is how she, you know, on YouTube, uh, in front of the video, she didn't die in front of that, but she showed her suicide note one by one. Okay, I am Amanda, so oh. Amanda Todd. Oh. Uh, this. And you know, why are you doing this to me? What did I do to you? Why are you sharing it? Why are you putting nasty comments? I even don't know you. So she directly addresses these people and she shows this and she says, I'm going to die. And that's that video which I saw and I was so moved by it emotionally and I thought, yes, this should be my story. That's one of the most poignant parts of your film. And when you are describing it, I think you have almost taken what I've done. I can imagine what must have done. And that's one of the most poignant part. And that's the only character which doesn't speak. Was Amanda also deaf and dumb? No, no, this I took as a cinematic liberty. You, you took the cinematic liberty, but that gives it, a, makes it even more poignant. The way she dies and the way she, and I think that's one of the were most well handled scenes by you as a director. Yeah, and Where they, uh, uh, those of you who have not seen the film, when he's talking about this girl is sitting in front of a Skype camera, is one by one bringing her suicide notes. So you don't see the girl, you only see a white paper with a word written on it, and yet the girl's emotions are coming through this opaque paper. This this paper with, with you, you cannot see, you get see the girl's face, you can see the girl's eyes, you can see the girl's tears when you don't see her face at all. I think that's one of the most well handled scenes by you. No, uh, thank you, but uh, I think the uh, actor who uh, did that role uh, did it very, very well because it was a single shot. You know, I couldn't, we couldn't cut that shot, right? For four minutes, four, four and a half minutes, I think. So, uh, she performed well and uh, everything came together, I think. Yeah. And, and another thing, because you have talked about that you have to look for a theme after getting this basic idea. I think the, the plot itself, which you have woven, mm -hmm. the plot not only of the Amanda story, which you are telling us about, that's just one thing, but how the other person has to unravel and reach the guy who has uploaded the video. Yeah. That itself is quite a complicated journey, That uh, the plot. Yeah, definitely. Which yeah. itself is, is... Yeah, a little bit. Tell us something about that. No, that I think is, you see, you have this theme. Now, uh, uh, everything will come from that theme, right? So I have a problem where someone is bullied online and uh, 
she died. Now, um, she was helpless, she died. Whoever did this, I don't know, no, I didn't read about him or her who did that anyway. They would be happily living their life where they kill someone. They are responsible for something. <coughs> so now I have two points, right? So uh, I thought, okay, what if this girl's father or this girl's mother or friend goes in pursuit of this other person? Who did it? Why they did it? And have their own sweet revenge? In the same way, you know, how Amanda suffered. So that after I watched the video, these questions and these answers came to me. So then I accordingly, you know, developed it from beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and and, and Jeffrey, the the fact that the the theme and the plot which you chose, uh, more than eighty percent of your film is located into two houses. Yeah. The true. camera doesn't go out of the house. Yes. It's only the flashbacks yes. where the camera goes out, and a little bit of a sequence of the plot where how he kills yeah, yeah. the persons or or when he is good and report to the police. So. so uh, to restrict yourself within the house itself makes it very claustrophobic and a very kind of an interesting thing after some time. So Yeah, it, it was really challenging. Um, for that I have to really thank my cinematographer, S.R. Kadir. He has done a Tamil, you know, lot of films. Uh, a very prominent film was Subramanya Puram, uh, which is popular here also, I think. Uh, so, uh, when he came on board, you know, it was a little more easier for me. So when he came on board, I, you know, invited him to my house, and I, I told him, "This is where we are going to shoot, and how are we going to do it?" So in that restriction, um, uh, how we can plan, you know, that we really spent a lot of time. We literally sat and wrote uh, how many shots we are going to shoot every day, and uh, how every sequence, how we are going to make it interesting and stuff like that. So that way, when I wrote that, for me, budgeting was also very easy. Right. So uh, that one thing and two. Initially, I thought I will shoot. I'll put green mat on my laptop and shoot it, and then shoot that separately and place it. But my another friend called Balaji, who is the colorist of my film, and he has helped me a lot in this film. So he told me, no, you do a live Skype conversation. That is much more cheaper than putting a green mat and then going to uh, you know. CG and stuff like that. So it, this was the whole uh, film was shot in my house. In one room I sit, in another room uh, the other character uh, Anand Sami sits. Converse, uh, Skype conversation is always live. We had this BSNL connection and uh, sometimes it used to be uh, slow. That is, I'll be looking at the character in the laptop and when he what he talks comes back later. There was this delay sometimes. There was a uh, connection problem was there. That was more difficult than, you know, shooting it. This does not happen. When we want, you know, uh, the connection does not go through. Sometimes it just freezes. Uh, there was not like uh, acting with live actor. It's pretty easy. But this was little. This was a little difficult actually. Actually, good that you spoke about it because that was my next question. That whether did you do the green screen or it's almost like shooting a film simultaneously at two places or the shooting of them twice that you have shot already and then you are giving the feed yeah. to your yeah. monitors yeah. to right. a desktop in one place and laptop at the other. Yeah. So uh, that I was just going to come to it that was it a live feed which you were giving or was it shot simultaneously as you were saying? It, it was all live and uh, uh, literally there, there was three cameras, two Skype cameras and one the real camera. So depending upon the scenes uh, intensity, whoever is taking the lead in that scene, your main camera would be in that. But you are mostly two directors because you are in two different spaces and yet it has to, to be... It, I mean teamwork, I mean it, uh, cinema like I think yesterday Shifali mentioned, um, it's a teamwork. Everyone should come together. Lot of passionate people, lot of uh, uh, people with lot of uh, commitment and you know, enthusiasm. And fortunately, uh, you know, this uh, story uh, got me those people. Through this story, I found many people. Wonderful. Riju ji ne maa se haath hilana shuru kiya, magar main chahta hu kam se kam ek to sawaal audience se bhi aaye, jo ki ham log karna chaya rahe the, lekin samao chhuta ja raha tha. Ek to sawaal koi. Shivali ji, kuch aap kehna chahenge, kuch bolna chahenge, kuch puchna chahenge. Well, 
uh, did you uh, sort of uh, start out with an, uh, an idea that you want to give a message to the current generation uh, which is so involved with this kind of a thing and so much of this is so rampant or was it something that just kind of emerged? Because I think it's very rare that a film that is so topical and in, in, a, in the zone of a almost like a psycho thriller also ends up really giving a very important social message. So did you start with that idea or did it just emerge? No, I didn't start with that idea at all. Like I told you, it started with the idea of what if I die in front of you like that song. Then I, but when I found this theme, when I saw this you know, Amanda suicide note, then I thought there is a responsibility. What am I doing? You know, I watch this, I, 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 I myself I have watched a lot of videos which are voyeuristic in nature. But this uh, process of uh, writing this, it changed me. I never watch, uh, you know, uh, uh, wire videos anymore. And a lot of people who watch this film, they told me that. So the point is, in the process of writing, and when this theme came in, then I thought I have to make this film so that it is responsible. And someone uh, next time when they watch this this kind of film, they at least know that by even by watching it or even by sharing it, at least they share a responsibility, little bit. My congratulations because it really does that. It does thank have that kind of impact. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. He's well made and uh, well protected. But thank you. If you a depressive feeling at the end to the people, and they feel what is all this going on? Because you might have conveyed the message to the people, but many don't understand their message as well. So possibly if you have made it more clear, and the depressive part of it is removed, it could have, have been very I don't know. You would know. No, I don't know. Uh, see, uh, depressive, not depressive, fun film, not fun film, you feel good in the end, bad in the end. I think everything comes from your story. I cannot change it. If, uh, truthfully, uh, when you travel with that story, um, that violence and you know uh, that end that you need, that comes from your story. You cannot compromise there. And once I think, if uh, I uh, if I had made it lighter, like you said, a um, little bit, you know, if I had reduced the uh, violence or the depressing part, what you're talking about. Probably, uh, you know, Shifali would not have asked me that question. Probably it would not have hit or connected in the way the story should connect. That's what I think. Uh, uh, I think you're very right, sir, that it is a little dark, it's a little depressing, but the fact is that our reality of today is so depressing. जो जिंदगी का पक्ष देखने के लिए सर मैं बदतमीजी कर रहा हूँ आपके सामने आप इतने बुजुर्ग हैं जो जिंदगी का पक्ष देखने के लिए बंबई में पहले हमको शुक्ला जी स्ट्रीट जाना पड़ता था और पेरिस में हमको बेगाल जाना पड़ता था और एमस्टरडम में हमको रेमरान डिस्ट्रिक्ट जाना पड़ता था आज वो हमारे घर के अंदर खुद चली आती है इन तारों से इन केबल से जिसको हम इंटरनेट कहते हैं वो आज हमारे घर के अंदर आती है आज हमको शुक्ला जी स्ट्रीट नहीं जाना पड़ता शुक्ला जी स्ट्रीट आज चल के हमारे घर तक चली आई है सर तो इसलिए डिप्रेसिंग है रियलिटी और वो अगर इनकी इनकी फिल्म में दिखाई देती है तो वो वो आज के समाज को दिखा रही है और आज के समाज को चेता भी रही है आज के समाज को बता भी रही है कि अगर आपको देखने का शौक है तो कल आप भी देखे जाएंगे If you live by the sword today, you are going to die by that sword, same sword tomorrow. And it's a very strong message that Shivani has given. It's such a good psycho thriller that you have to keep scared, keep at the edge, keep at the edge, and then give a positive message. It's such a good thing. And to be able to achieve that, Sudhir was just telling me that he himself gave you the award in Chennai for one of the best film directors for this particular film. और हम लोगों की तरफ से भी आपको बहुत 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 बहुत
So, uh, uh, those who haven't seen the film, uh, like tell them that he's not only the director of the film, he's also acted in the film, yeah. and he also produced the film. Yeah. Of course. So, uh, I think we missed out the debate on the, the producing part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually about to ask the same question. Okay. So, since you are the producer as well, so could you just um, uh, tell us about the, the problems you faced, and now, since you have uh, you have released it in Kerala, and now are you looking at uh, the uh, worldwide releases that and then what problems you are facing? Yeah, there are many. Making a film, I think, now I realize it's much, much easier than uh, taking it to people. Especially a film like mine with uh, new people. Right, I think uh, there should be the right kind of marketing and a platform for an independent film. Independent film makers make a film, bus, oh yeah. And I don't think we are very good at selling ourselves. Right. Um, so, Suru Sehi, right from when you start your script, parallelly I think an independent filmmaker should make his own creative plans, not the normal stuff. A creative plan, he should write his own script. Whether it releases or not, that's a different thing, but at least by the time it comes to festival and by the time people know about the film, even general public should know that I said, kuch film bana hai kahi par. Right? So that work, I think, I didn't do at all. I just made it. So I just, uh, so I, uh, I just made my film, that's all, and the money was over. After that, I didn't know how to take it forward. So Kerala may release hua, but uh, again, it just released without any marketing or publicity and uh, but it was critically received well. Now I am looking forward to release it, you know, Pan India because it's a multiplex film, it's multilingual, it's from wherever I have seen it has connected with people and they understand the film and stuff like that. I am looking forward to that. I hope, you know, I find someone. Um, so, so you already know the power of digital media now. Mm -hmm. um, See, see, media may, okay, there is Netflix and other avenues where you can uh, make money and probably the future is going to be that. But as a filmmaker, you want it, your film to be there on the screen and people to watch it. And I think um, no matter how much marketing or whatever you do online, I don't think that percentage of people is coming to theatre and watch your film. So the normal marketing of newspaper and posters and what anything else creative we can think about so that the normal public know about your film. I say film banai, this is important or not important or this talks about this, it's thriller or whatever. That has that they should know. Just like a Salman Khan film or Amir Khan film, the kind of money they spend on that, I think uh, this also requires that kind of money. If I make my film on a 50 lakh budget, I think next time when I plan, I should plan for one for 50 lakh. 50 lakhs may I will make my film and 50 lakh I have to um, spend if I want my film to release in theaters. I think. Yeah.